Hello, it's Jason Payne for Cold Banker, Dean Harper Realtors. On today's podcast, I want to answer some questions that a lot of my clients have about MUDs, PIDs, and PUDs. Uh, we're seeing more and more of those nowadays in the communities, especially the ones that like the video because they've got so many bells and whistles in them. And yes, those bells and whistles do come at a cost, and that is with those MUDs, PIDs, and PUDs. And a few weeks ago, Miss Selena Medina from Independence Title came in and she taught a course on it to our brokerage. And I thought, man, this is some amazing information that shouldn't be just kept to realtors. I'm, um, if y'all been watching my channel, y'all know I want to present all the information out to you guys. So I invited Miss Selena on to give that class to everybody and to answer that very important question. If you are a 100% disabled vet, do you pay the mud tax? More to come on that. All right, welcome, Selena, and uh, thank you for joining us today. Oh, you're very welcome. Happy to be here. Thanks. Um, but yeah, she's going to pull up her presentation and kind of a, give a break uh, breakdown of what are MUDs, PUDs, and PIDs. Yeah, so MUDs, PUDs, and PIDs are newer taxing entities that... Texas has adopted. And I want to explain each one of these for you. So MUDs, PUDs, and PIDs, I mean, where are you going to learn about this, right? We sometimes only buy one house in our lifetime, and now we have this additional tax. Who teaches you about all the different pieces that you pay in your tax bills? Well, it's my job to educate real estate agents so that they are helping you to understand these pieces. But straight out of my mouth today, I want to give you the same explanation that I gave to Jason at his brokerage meeting that just explains a little bit more. And of course, you all are all interested in what happens to 100% disabled veterans. So usually you don't have to worry about the tax pieces. You don't even think about that when you have that, that particular exemption. But in this case, it's just a little different. And I'm going to explain each one of these and why that is. So today, I want to show you and tell you a little bit about these. I'm going to give you the introduction so that you have an understanding of what each one of these is. And then Jason will cover the pieces for the contract. And then we'll answer the big question at the end. So PIDs, to break that down, and tons of acronyms here, are public improvement districts. I'm going to explain to you exactly what these are, who created them, how they're governed, and how you're going to be charged. Public utility districts, or PUDs, are just a little different. And then we have municipal utility districts. So they each have their own definition, they each have their own taxing entity, and they each are governed in similar but can be different ways. So this chart for me is the one that gives us the best understanding. It breaks down the purpose for each one, how it was created, who governs it, who funds it, and who services it. These are the questions that usually a homeowner or potential homeowner is going to have. And to be honest, most sellers don't even realize these pieces themselves. So if that's who's supposed to notify you through their real estate agent, whether or not you're in one of these pieces, let me just say to you from the beginning, most people don't know if they are in one of these. So here's some understanding on maybe why they don't know, or perhaps these entities are created in the time they own their home. So it wasn't anything that they had to think about when they were purchasing it, but it's going to be very important for those buying it in the future. A PID is funds for improvements in a public area. These are created by the city and the county, and they're governed by the city and the county, which means you're going to see this on your property tax bill. Jason has been educated on how to find that in a property tax bill. And this is going to be under the jurisdiction area if you ever go online to look at this for yourself or you're looking at what that breakdown of cost or percentage of tax actually looks like in your area. The services for public improvement districts can vary, but I'm going to give you some examples of what those are. Now, a PUD is a utility and service district. 
This piece is added in by actual Texas legislator. This is just for living in Texas. There are certain areas that are going to need additional utilities than what the city or county can add in. So perhaps a community that has to have maybe its own sewage system or its own service providers. So this does happen quite frequently these days. It's a little bit newer to Texas, but we're seeing it just more prevalent across the state as a whole. Property owners, because it's usually set to one specific subdivision or area, are the ones who govern this utility district. So if they have their own sewage plant or if they have um, their own utility uh, plant within their community, then the property owners are actually who govern this piece. They're still going to be paying for it through property taxes, through an assessment, and these things are going to cover water, sewage, electric, and gas most frequently. A, a municipal utility district provides utilities and services very similarly to the public, but in this one, it's just a little bit different. This is municipal, and so it might include some additional things like road maintenance and parks. So a public utility district might be specific to a community or a subdivision. A municipal utility district is going to be able to be used by the masses. So think of municipal and masses as a way to kind of figure that piece out. So in here, this is actually added in by the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. This is to make sure that we're doing the right things for the area. If there's any kind of water conservation or any wildlife that needs to be taken care of in a different way. And that's why this one ties into road maintenance, drainage, and parks. This one is governed by the property owner board as well. And you're going to see this tax in your assessment also. So. Here's just a little breakdown. It's a little bit easier to understand when you start to see it in this form. And this is the part that I like to just get a little bit deeper on. If you're looking at the public improvement district, then you can think of things like cityscapes and landscapes, maybe some public art, um, wider walkways. And here's an example of what that might look like if you're in South Austin. If you go to SoCo in South Austin, there's tons of artwork that's been murals that have been added to the walls. You see this in our downtown New Braunfels and Seguin areas as well. So we're starting to adopt some of these pieces and this is for public enhancement for the tourists who are coming to our area that are, are helping to bring additional revenue for even just the enjoyabilities of those who live in the area. Beautification, making sure that trash is removed, making sure that graffiti is removed. All of those things are additional tax dollars that are now being assessed through a public utility district. Here are some examples of maybe drainage or parks, wildlife, things that we don't think of or maybe sometimes take for granted. Those trails are maintained. Um, the ponds that we see in the middle of a park, well, that's water drainage, but they're made to look really nice. Those things are all really important so that we can definitely go through those pieces and be able to enjoy them ourselves. Now, these utility districts, both the municipal and the public, I want you to know there is a part of this in your contract. So I've gone through this with Jason so that he can help you to understand. And notice that there isn't anywhere that you actually have to agree to it. It just states your property could be in one of these pieces. And most people don't really know where to look for those things. So we've gone through and we've helped real estate agents better understand these pieces so that they can help you with what those pieces are. The Texas codes are required as notices to you and there are new addendums that are added to your contract for disclosure as well. So know that those pieces exist. But here's one of the big questions. If I am in one of these, where am I going to find it? 
This is what a breakdown for your jurisdiction looks like if you go to your local appraisal district and you can search any property in Texas to see this. So if potentially you're looking at a property, Jason's going to help you with this pro process because he's going to go and look at this as well. But here's where you might be able to do a little of your own research. If you go under jurisdiction, anything that looks just a little different, here we have a, a water district that's been added in for this particular particular piece. So these are all new taxing entities that you might see. Now notice the tiny little amount here, 0 0.017. So that's just a tiny percentage, right, that is now being added to take care of this new district of some sort in that property's area. So now, I want to, can you go back to that last screen? I want to interject sure. real quick. Um, this is in Round Rock, which is north of Austin. Um, most of the counties in like Guadalupe, uh, Tomal County, Kendall County, you're not going to see the Austin Community College or stuff like that. However, True. if you are in Bear County, you would there is a San Antonio Community College thing bumping their tax rate up. That's mm -hmm. a big difference between knowing what county you're in, what you're going to be taxed at. Well, most of my videos, I'm mentioning the tax rate. New Braunfels, yes. uh, you're use, usually around 2 to 2.2. .2. Shirts, you're at 2.5. And that's total. And then when I'm talking about communities like Esperanza, those are going to be just a touch higher because of that mud tax. Mm -hmm. And the Grove section of Vintage Oaks, um, the community, the acre section is 1.8. But the growth section, because they have that public improvement district, bumping it up to 2%. So that's real world application to what Selena is explaining right now. It does stack on top of your property taxes. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, no worries. That's that's a perfect explanation. Uh, and just as a rule of thumb, as you're going into communities and you see these extra beautification pieces, this is one of the questions that you might already jot down to ask your real estate agent. When you meet with Jason, this would be, okay, this is beautiful. Am I paying for this additionally mm -hmm. um, for this particular community. And that's going to vary per community. I do see that these are now being assessed to our larger communities that are being built. And those that are outside usually of a city, so right on a city county borderline, right? So we're outside of the city. So we need additional utilities. We need some additional help. We're not getting those city pieces. And so those larger community plan developments that are are now being constructed are adding these additional pieces in to help with those parts. And, so, and we're definitely seeing that because as the population is growing, the city already has their water system done, but especially when you're going out in the Texas Hill Country and you're going into uh, just kind of out in the woods in the Hill Country, that there's not already that public water system there built in so having that mud put in there really does help the developer get that paid for in advance correct yes so it all comes down to extra enjoyability for the homeowner that's going to live there extra amenities and when you start to see the additional walking trails and parks and ask those questions it's it's at our responsibility really when we go out to purchase the home to know some of those things but your real estate agent is there to guide you through that and to continue to educate you with those pieces so there are forms that are associated with each one of these jason has been educated on how to find those and how to add them into the pieces as we're going through your contract at independence title i'm always Always here to help with those pieces too. So if you're looking at a property and you're questioning it, yes, by all means. Um, sellers, you can call as well. Call the appraisal district, ask for this information. There's forms that are going to be associated with this. We're here to help you through the entire process. So we're never going to leave you to figure this out on your own, but there are some great best practices to have. This kind of leads us into our piece now where we have that question, what if I don't 
pay taxes, right, Jason? That's yes. usually the one. I get that question all the time because here in Texas, if you're watching this anywhere in the world, if you are a 100% VA disabled vet from the military, you do not pay state property taxes. That's a huge benefit that Texas has, but you have to be 100% rated for you not being able to do that. But man, what if you are that person, it definitely increases your buying power because you're not paying that 2% property tax or 2.5, oh, sure. depending on the community. Yes, absolutely. So there's going to be um, an additional resource for you on my website. You can go to independencetitle.com. There is a property info request and you can just request to figure out if your property is in one of these public improvement districts for free. This is a tool that Jason can use. This is a tool that any real estate agent can use, but the general public can use as well. So if you ever question whether or not your property is in one, know that you can visit independencetitle.com. Look for our tools and resources under customer service. You're going to see property info request. This is a free service we're happy to help with. Again, some homeowners don't even know that they are in one of these pieces. It, it comes to a little bit of a shock to them when they go to sell them their home and the real estate agent is asking them about this particular piece because there's notification that now is required for the for the new buyer. So it is one of those pieces, but that large question that we all ask, do I have to pay the tax? And da -da 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 -da. I know drum roll and the yes, currently and at any point this could be changed in legislation. Uh, Jason has visited the Capitol and um, fights for the rights of homeowners for certain, but because it is a newer piece and it has not been addressed that way, currently MUDs, PUDs, and PIDs still are going to be taxes collected, even for those who have who have that 100% disability piece and exemption. So but don't don't let that. I've got some clients that are like, they only want to look at communities that do not have a mud or pit in it. Mm -hmm. Please find the community that's going to fit your needs best. Don't stress about that 0.01% mud tax. Very true. Um, I, I don't would, I hate for my clients to go, man, I did wish, do wish I lived in that community. I have friends there and like, man, that is beautiful. But I didn't want to spend that extra 20 or $30 a month on the mud tax. So always think big picture. First, find the right city you want to live in. Uh, New Braunfels, Bolverde, Bernie, the Shirt Cibolo area. That's where I really specialize in. And then you narrow it down to the community. But yeah, don't, don't stress about these muds and pids. It's not that big a deal come the grand scheme of life but you definitely need to be educated about it. Yep, for sure, for sure. And it's all about just asking some questions. I gave you some pointers, some places that you can go. You can definitely go to the appraisal district. If you're still not sure, please visit our website. There's a free tool on there for you. Um, or reach out to me, reach out to Jason. We're, we're here to help you. And he, he has my number on speed dial. So any questions that he has, he can always bounce off of myself or one of our escrow officers at Independence Title. And we're here to help. Yeah. And a shout out to Miss Selena here. Um, if you are moving to the area or if you're trying to sell your property and you've found this video informational, uh, you can always ask your real estate agent. And it's like, hey, you know what? Can we use Selena from Independence Title? I really like her. That agent's going to look <laughs> out for their client's needs. If the client has a request for a certain title rep and a title company, agent doesn't matter. The fees are all pretty much the same across the board from which title company you use. So it's kind of preference. That's why the title companies come in and teach classes to agents because they're trying to get our business the same can be said for the clients. The clients can say, let's use them because uh, I feel comfortable with her. I trust her. And I hope you feel comfortable and trust me enough to be your real estate agent. And if you do, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to help you. Uh, most properties, it doesn't cost you anything to use a real estate agent to purchase properties. As of now, there's some lawsuits going on, but that's in the future. But right now, as of 2020, 2020, 2024, uh, don't buy a property without using agent. It's just silly. 
Um, and of course, if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and as always, share these videos with your friends and family. Miss Lena, you got anything else we're gonna add? No, I think you you did a great job. I'm glad to be partnering with you. I'm uh, appreciate the opportunity to share some education. I think that the more that we share educational pieces, the easier the process of home buying and home selling can be. We know that it's stressful, but if we have those additional little pieces to help us along the way, it certainly can make the transaction go that much smoother. Thank you exactly. for the opportunity. There's no such thing as too much information. That's why I do these videos. Thank you, Jason. Hey, my pleasure. Appreciate it once again coming and uh, helping educate the public. All right, take care now, and I appreciate you guys watching. All right, bye. I'm going to edit that part. <laughs> yeah, I think that's great. Yeah. Good job. Okay, well, definitely appreciate it. And, yeah, uh, let me know how it goes. If there's anything, I can always hop back on uh, later this afternoon if need be. So... Uh